We like to eat cows. We like to drink their milk, which is why there are roughly one and a half billion cows in the world at any given time. And these cows have to be fed. Some are out in the pasture dining on grass, but most are in feedlots or dairy barns eating hay or corn. But no matter what they eat, they burp methane. That is a notorious greenhouse gas responsible for about 30% of the increase in global warming that we are experiencing. Methane is produced by a number of natural processes as well, but a significant amount comes from ruminants like sheep, goats, and cattle. Cows are responsible for about 4% of global warming. Cows have a more complicated digestive system than humans. They actually have four stomachs. The first one into which food enters is called the rumen. This is teeming with a large variety of microbes that begin the digestive process by churning out an array of enzymes that break down the complex carbohydrates, proteins, and fats in the feed into simple molecules that can be used for all the cow's needs. Polysaccharides are broken down to simple sugars that are then converted to acetate, propionate, and butyrate, all of which can be used as source of energy. But some of the protozoa, fungi, and bacteria in the rumen also produce hydrogen and carbon dioxide. And these are converted into methane by single-celled organisms called archaea. There's extensive research aimed at reducing the amount of methane burped out by cattle. Adding seaweed to the feed has met with some success, and research has revealed that bromoform present in seaweed interferes with an enzyme that archaea used to produce methane. Silencing the gene responsible for the production of this enzyme is one approach being looked at, but isolating the responsible archaea is proving to be very difficult. Another possibility is to track down the bacteria that generate the hydrogen that archaea use, but this has also proven to be a tough task because there are some 200 species of bacteria that inhabit the rumen. However, thanks to recent developments in biotechnology, specifically a technique known as metagenomics, some of these bacteria have been identified. Metagenomics is the technique by which DNA is extracted from all the microorganisms in a bulk sample and is then broken down into small segments. These segments can then be analyzed by computer and with the help of artificial intelligence provide information about what microbes are present. Some of the bacteria, duodenibacillus in particular, gobble up hydrogen that would be used by the archaea to generate methane. This opens up possibilities. Using the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing technique, it may be possible to incorporate more copies of the gene responsible for hydrogen absorption uh, into the DNA of duodenbacillus. Or it may be possible to insert such a gene into the genome of other bacteria that can then be used as a probiotic added to animal feed. If there is no hydrogen available for the archaea, they cannot produce methane. Of course, another approach is to gravitate towards more of a plant-based diet to reduce methane emission. That for today is our Cup of Joe.